Coming up on First at Four, downtown Hazard becomes a location for a company seeking to transform the heart of coal country into a leader in renewable energy with the promise of jobs. And a recap of Republican candidates squaring off in the fourth debate in the 2024 presidential race. Plus, we are tracking some wet and windy weather by this weekend. Your first alert forecast coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, one renewable energy company is now opening offices in downtown Hazard with plans of making a region-wide impact. Perry County leaders gathered to celebrate the opening of Eadlin Renewables, a company with the mission of helping communities advance in technology. Founder and former Kentucky State Auditor Adam Eadlin says they plan to transform former leaders in coal production into leaders in renewable energy production. We want to make sure they can maintain that leadership as an energy producer, even in a green energy world. And so I think in 10 years, people will realize this day and see all the new jobs that have been created and all the new opportunities that have been brought to communities, coal field communities like Hazard. Along with renewable energy, Edlin says they plan to invest in eastern Kentuckians by hiring them. Hazard Community and Technical College will also play a role in training students for electrical jobs. Each year, Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day is observed on December 7th, with today marking 82 years since the surprise attack that changed history. On this day, folks are reminded to stop and honor the more than 2,400 U.S. personnel that died during the Pearl Harbor attack, and 107-year-old Clay County native Oakley Hacker says that he still remembers that day very well. Guys in Cincinnati are working 35 cents higher, and they hit us on a Sunday morning, December the 7th. I remember that. I remember boys that talk and said, well, we will whip them in, in a week. See, it wasn't a week now. It's a rough war. And yes, he is 107 years old. He stays at the Veterans Center in Hazard. Now, on December 8th, 1941, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt declared war on Japan, soon entering World War II. Ceremonies were held around the nation to commemorate the deadly bombing of Pearl Harbor 82 years ago today. A 21-bell salute for the fallen was held at the National World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. That attack killed more than 2,300 service members, launching the United States, of course, into World War II. At the annual Pearl Harbor Memorial event in Hawaii, 102-year-old survivor Harry Chandler recalled the bombing. I saw the bombs being dropped on the harbor because we overlooked the harbor completely. And I saw the Arizona going up, saw the Oklahoma turning. And then they put us all in trucks and drove us all down into the harbor and we started saving people. With each passing year, there are fewer survivors. Chandler was one of only five at the Hawaii ceremony. We are tracking some fantastic weather across the mountains on this Thursday afternoon. Plenty of blue sky and sunshine. Let's take a live look from Buffalo Mountain. That current temperature across the region in the upper 50s at this hour. So once again, we are also above average on this Thursday, sitting at 56 in Irvine, 57 for Somerset, also Monticello, 54 over in Pikeville. We should be close to 50. So again, we are well above average and as promised, we are much warmer than this time on Wednesday. Most of us up to 15, maybe up to 20. 20 degrees warmer in some areas today compared to this time yesterday. That warming trend will also continue into your Friday, so be sure to enjoy that because we are tracking some changes by this weekend. But up on the radar, 
Once again, we are dry, all thanks to high pressure off the southeast coast. And again, that will keep us dry into this evening, also tonight and on Friday. But those changes are ahead as we go into this weekend. Your forecast tonight, though, temperature is once again cool back in the upper 30s and lower 40s as you wake up and kick off your Friday. And again, temperatures top out above average in the upper 50s and lower 60s on Friday. More showers and maybe some wintry weather in some areas by this weekend. Those details plus your full seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Steve Cameron, thank you Four Republican presidential hopefuls battled it out on the debate stage last night in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Front runner and former President Donald Trump sat out once again, while most attacks were aimed at former UN ambassador Nikki Haley. CBS's Naomi Ruckham breaks down the fourth debate. It was a night of blows and comebacks for the smallest field yet of GOP presidential hopefuls. Nikki Haley took most of the heat, with entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy setting his sights on the former U.N. ambassador. Nikki, you were bankrupt when you left the U.N. After you left the U.N., you became a military contractor, and now you're a multimillionaire. That math does not add up. It adds up to the fact that you are corrupt. Haley, whose poll numbers are on the rise and has welcomed new high-profile endorsements, appeared to take the shots in stride. I love all the attention, fellas. Thank you for that. <laughs> Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie came to Haley's defense, delivering one of the most memorable jabs of the night at Ramaswamy. The fourth debate that you would be voted in the first 20 minutes as the most obnoxious blowhard in America. So <laughs> shut up for the Former President Donald Trump skipped the debate once again, instead holding a fundraiser in Florida. But the clear frontrunner's bid for 2024 was a hot topic, as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis walked a fine line on whether Trump is fit to be president for another term. We have an opportunity to nominate someone and elect someone for two terms. We should think? not nominate somebody he won't who's, answer. It, who's, who's almost 80 years old. Scuffles among the four candidates still shooting for second place marked the final debate before the Iowa caucuses next month. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. The latest CBS News poll from early November shows Trump winning 61 percent of likely GOP primary voters nationwide, more than all the other candidates combined. DeSantis came in a distant second at 18 percent. Coming up on First of Four, one boy from Ukraine who is the victim of a Russian attack is comforted by Pope Francis. And enjoy the nice weather today because we are tracking some changes as early as this weekend. Timing out those rain chances after this break.